these events a few days a week at uh, 5 p.m. The idea is we'll come up with something creative to do until the end of lockdown, whenever that might be, wherever we are. So uh, these events as always are free, uh, but if you would like to make a donation to our work, uh, we do accept uh, donations on our website, theflorentine.net support. I'm very happy, delighted to welcome the wonderful uh, Cameron Mohammadi, um, author, journalist, public speaker, um, obviously uh, a resident of Tuscany, she's up the road from me, <laughs> up the hill from me, um, <laughs> and uh, we're going to be talking a little bit today, Cameron's going to be giving us advice about how to approach keeping a diary, which is, you know, a, a good support mechanism, a strategy to, to see us through, day, through these days, and, and, and a way maybe that we can, once we get back to, to our normal life or our new normal lives it might be a good way of of saying that we we created something we can look back on something with pride that, that we created so we're going to be talking about how to keep a diary and then the next step from that how to begin writing a memoir so over to you Carmen thank you very very much for for delighting us today with your experience and I can't wait to learn from you maybe in the meantime you can tell me a little bit about where where everybody is uh, in the world, are we are we in Italy? Or I know we've got somebody from London. Who else have, have we got with us? I'm in Rome. Ah, wonderful. I'm in Paris. I'm in Prague. Wow. And I'm, in Prague. In, I'm in Poitiers. Czech, Czech Republic. <laughs> wow, we've got a we've got a wonderful mix. We're all having really different experiences at the moment as well. <laughs> We're at different stages in our experience. <laughs> Thanks, Helen. Hi, everyone. This is so amazing. I just wanted to say hi to everyone. Is that Sandrine, son, who I met in uh, Bali? Yes, I'm in Mexico. Hi. Welcome, <laughs> sweetheart. How lovely to see you again. You too. And Veronica, you're in Prague. I <laughs> see so you've got your mask on. <laughs> Yeah, we we have to. It's from government. We have to all the time have face masks. And I'm in train, actually. Okay, well, better to be <laughs> safe. Well, and hi, Lynn. Yeah. Hi, everybody else that I can't quite see on here um, right now. Uh, thanks all for coming. So, look, um, where can we start? I think that you know when we went into lockdown i thought like everybody else oh good i'm gonna write a book um, um i haven't yet because i think probably we've all in our different ways and our different places of experience we've probably kind of come to the same thing which is it's quite an overwhelming experience somehow lockdown you know it takes quite a lot of your time and your energy and i don't know about you but i often feel like you know the day is gone and I don't really know quite what I achieved, right? So keeping a record is a really good idea and keeping it in a way that, um, um, keeping it in a way that is kind of regular so that you can really refer back to it um, and keep it as a record of your, of this time where um i don't know about you guys but you know the first few days i was really on i was really on it with how i was feeling and how things were going and everything and then things started to days started to merge into one you know um so i think that keeping a record keeping a diary can be a really good way of doing that i wanted to ask maybe everybody who's here if there is something specifically that I can kind of, that we can talk about that you'd like me to talk about. Or From my perspective, I'll be honest. Could, yeah, I'm sort of like, I would love to use this time to write something more extended. Obviously I'm a journalist, so I write all the time, every day. 
Yeah. Um, but I would love to write something longer and I've never achieved that. How do I go? My question to you would be, how do I make that leap from right from j being a journalist to being a novelist? <laughs> you know what I mean? Not, not even a novelist. Not something that you have intended. Sorry, my camera oh, felt yeah. it's really bad. <laughs> really unprofessional set up here. Sorry, guys. Um, it's really hard, Helen. That's a really good point, you know, because I was writing my first book, I approached it as a journalist. Doesn't really work um, because, you know, long form is, is, you know, imagine the piece that you write that takes you how many days. You have to extend that over how many hundreds of thousands of words and keep your thoughts together. So I think the best way to approach writing longer form is to try and break it down into bite-sized chunks because you're not going to be able to sit down and write whatever it is from beginning to end sort of in one go even if you were writing a linear narrative so the best way to approach it is to break it down into kind of um i you can do it in several ways if you're clear enough you know what kind of chapters you're looking at you can do a chapter outline so you can break it down into chapters however that might come down the line so in the first instance, you might want to just write, um, group your short bites, as it were, into in, around themes. Um, with Bella Figura, I took several approaches. One was definitely the themes that I wanted to cover. Another was the characters that I wanted to have in there. Um, you also have kind of, you know what you, it is that you want to say. So how are you going to bring that in? Because what you want to say, it, you know, you're not going to go and kind of hit people over the head with what you want to say. That's almost the difference between, you know, with journalism, you're very direct. But when you're writing long form narrative, um, you need to do a lot of what my editors are always telling me, and it drove me crazy, show, not tell. Yeah. So it's all about show, not tell. So that's a really good exercise to begin with, I would say, for everybody. If you want to, if you have something that you really want to communicate, right, do a little exercise maybe with yourself where you write that in different forms. So what you want to communicate, you can write it just as you would speak it, first of all. So if you were just talking to me, so let's say your elevator pitch, so you write that in a really straightforward way. Then you can try writing it as if you're writing it in a journal. So it's something very personal to you. And then give yourself the challenge of thinking, OK, this is a movie. So I can't say, so how am I going to? So then if you're thinking that actually you're dealing, the reason why thinking about a movie is quite helpful is because it takes you out of thinking that you um, your words are going to kind of communicate something directly. So you want to actually build your ideas into scenes and you want to have your characters and the things that are happening that are able to actually communicate what it is that you want to communicate without you having to spell it out. And that in itself takes can take time. Um, so different approaches, themes, characters, scenes that you really want to have in there, because I think we all, whenever we are thinking about writing something, there's something quite specific in our heads, right? And um, we might have quite a specific sort of image in our heads. I often see things in images and in, in, in those kinds of scenarios. Um, and then I build that image with words, right? Um, so that's, that's some, something that I would say, try and break it down. You don't have to break it all down because a lot of things become clear as you, I find, um, but you know what your overall plan is and you know the points that you really want to have in there. So break those down into chunks, set yourself a sort of vague schedule, you know, um, whether it's the classic I'm going to write 500 words a day or whether it's okay I'm going to write for two hours a day 
or whatever it is give yourself something to aim for so that you have a structure to your days because you know what you're aiming towards when i'm writing if i'm really on it or i mean if my deadline is really close <laughs> then i tend to go monday to friday if i'm really pushing through 2000 words a day 10000 words that's a chapter so that's a very loose kind of um, framework that I work towards when I really want to be disciplined and be kind of under the cosh. I would say the discipline is the thing that I struggle with the most, um, but it's really important because writing is a muscle like any other. So it's kind of like going to the gym, you know, you're not going to be able to go and lift that mega weight if you haven't built up to it yeah so <clears throat> you need to write regularly and i personally find that social media can be really great and it can or it can be really destructive because actually you could express so much on social media but that in a way takes away from your own writing so i think being disciplined with things like that is also really important when you are wanting to set up a writing routine now, funnily enough, half of the world has now kind of been forced to live a little bit the way I live <laughs> and a little bit the way most writers live, which is in kind of uh, isolation. And um, we're all experiencing this now. It can be very, very hard, as, as I think we're all finding out, to spend that much time um, sort of with yourself and with the blank page um but but that's what you have to do you know i'm an arch procrastinator i can write notes forever i can take walks that kind of inspire me forever but actually you just you can't do it without sitting down and doing it and yeah. that's you can't get away from that whatever else you do that is around that and we'll talk about some of the rituals some of the things that can help lead us into that space but all of those things are things that are bringing you to that place where it's just you and your um, pen and paper or your computer so at some point in the writing game you have to be able to be really comfortable with going inside and i think what most of us find when we have to go inside um, is that that can be a really challenging place to go um now <clears throat> i wanted just also to flag up a couple of books that i'm sure you all know about the classics the artist's way is a brilliant one for as far not just writers for any creatives actually now i've had this book about 20 years um julia cameron it's really famous it's been around for a really long time and she has a very kind of um well, she has quite a spiritual approach, and I think in a way you can't get away from that because when you when you come to writing or creating any kind of artistic work, what happens is you understand that you are in a kind of relationship. In fact, I wrote this down earlier because Liz Gilbert, Elizabeth Gilbert said this, and I think she's very good with this stuff. She said that creativity is a relationship between a human being and the mysteries of inspiration. So at some point, you have to get into that place, and that can be an uncomfortable place to be. So Julia Cameron is really, really, really good at leading you through this process. Um, she has practical exercises, tips. She tells you things to do. She encourages loads of things that you, know, you might find you probably, as artistic, creative people, do naturally anyway. Now, her big thing, which I think is quite famous, is her morning pages. She insists that the first thing that you do when you get up is you sit now, this is not a diary and this is not a journal, okay? These are all the different terms we have. Her morning pages are, you sit yourself down, same time every day if you can, preferably first thing, and you take a notebook or whatever it is, I don't know, I would always take you know, an A4, and you fill three pages three pages so that's why you know it would be good if your pages are a decent size because if you do this <laughs> cheating 
So, <laughs> but her idea about the morning pages is don't go into them expecting anything. You are literally, excuse my terminology, but it's, it's literally like you're vomiting. You are getting everything that's in your head out. You're just writing. So you might, you know, I read through some of my, well, my goodness, I did decades of morning pages. I read through some of them once and they are absolutely shocking. Um, don't ever look at them again. Because the idea of the morning pages is to get everything out. So when you start to write, you might wake up and you might go, oh, I'm feeling a bit fuzzy today. Oh my God, how many um, infections? Uh, you know, and all of the monkey mind kind of stuff that's going on will come out. But what you're doing is you're getting it out and you're putting it down. And it might be that by the end of those three pages, you've burnt your way through the kind of blah, blah, and you've started to write something that is good, useful, says something, or has one word in it that you love. You know, and actually, one of the things that you might find is that you're writing stuff that you hadn't necessarily focused on. So again, that's that meeting with um, the mysteries of inspiration. Um, it's almost like a kind of free flow. I have a, a wonderful friend who's one of the people I know has a very similar process to me and he understands me. And, he, and whenever I'm complaining about, you know, well, yeah worried about starting a new book he says just go and fit yourself in the space show up every day and write every day and you know that for sort of nine days out of those the first two weeks you're going to hate every word that you write and you're going to hate yourself and you're going to want to give up but you know that if you ignore that and you just carry on one day something will suddenly appear that you go oh i don't hate this and so he says, you need to get the crap out before you can get to the good stuff. So the morning pages is really about that. And it's about doing that daily. Um, I found, you know, coming out of my morning pages, all sorts of things, characters I didn't know about, you know, swings, things that were going to happen in the story I had no idea about. Because actually, if you're disciplined again about your morning pages, at some point in that process as you're doing it daily, you will run out of blah. Yeah, you've got to kind of let the blah, blah, <laughs> as it were. Um, so that's, uh, so I would say that uh, that's a really good tip for everybody on any level. Now, <clears throat> I was also thinking about, um, seeing if there's any more questions. There is, a, there is a question there coming from Didi, who asks, how do you really catch the emotions and record them when they tend to change from hour to hour or even more frequently? And uh, Didi likes to add drawings, so you can't draw, the here's the, sorry, can't draw at all. I don't know if you would like to ask the question yourself, we can maybe unmute you and uh, allow, <laughs> let you speak directly with Carmen. Is that possible, Jane? Could you? That's the question anyway, Carmen, if you'd like to okay. address well, it. Yeah. Um, huh. So yes, you can draw. Listen, your diary or your journal. Actually, let's first deal with this. What is the difference between writing a diary and writing a journal? Um, now, I guess a diary is something that by definition is something that you're doing every day where you record what happened or it's a diary of whatever, you know, people keep a food diary. Um, a journal is looser, a journal is more about ideas, about putting down anything that is kind of, that might not be developed, it might not be factual, but whatever you're thinking. I mean, I think that we can call it what we like, right? And I think that we can also do what we like. Yes, yeah, so if you want to do drawings, I know plenty of people who in their kind of daily journal or diary or morning pages or whatever, they do that. They um, have all their pens and, you know, lovely art and they really let go and they draw and they put collage. And, you know, I think that's for you. So whatever expresses your creativity, whatever helps you to feel um, whole, about what you're trying to express is absolutely fine. Now, in terms of how can they, yes, how can you catch and record your emotions when they're changing so fast? That's a really good question and that's a really good question for this moment, isn't it? I guess 
part of the reason why we think why we, it's a useful um, exercise to have a time or a dedication or a commitment that every day you're going to write your diary or your journal or whatever it is because we can we do tend to remember things um, and we can therefore recall them later when we're sitting down to write but if as in the moment that things are happening you make a note of them then they're always there and available for you to go back to um, one of the things that I do when I'm out and about and I see something and a perfect sentence goes with that and it kind of goes through my head I will take out the teeny tiny notebook and write it down alternatively I sit on here you know because we've all got these in fact I even recently started to make voice notes but they were I you know I prefer the writing process um, that helps somehow my thoughts kind of loosen and reform and express in a more ordered fashion and I think partly that is why often people write because you know those of us who find this to be the way that we um the form of expression that we prefer um or that is compelling to us it's because it helps us order our thoughts in fact it f often i don't really know what i think about stuff until i start writing them down you know um so there's something for me that's also very magical about what happens as you do this or a type, you know, whichever is the action which helps your thoughts to flow. Um, and they take on a different structure than, than, than they do with, as they're just kind of going about in your head. You know what I mean? Um, for me personally, and I think for most people, writing down what you're feeling and what you're thinking can be a really really good way of understanding and digesting and getting on top of that um and as the day goes you know because you can't spend kind of 14 hours a day in front of your computer or whatever have something handy where as the day goes on if you are um something occurs to you you just make a note of it and then in your moment that's your structured moment of the day then you go to all of those notes and you bring them in and you bring those notes in and you bring them into whatever it is that you're writing even if it's a diary entry um w was that okay uh, i'm just gonna yeah, that's good. now I, I had some questions for you guys, um, which was to get everyone thinking a little bit about this. Um, now, what are you writing and why are you writing? What is it for? Is it for you? Is it for posterity? Is it for publication? is it just because or is it literally because you want to find that way into yourself every day i think your motive for writing is quite important at least it will shape how you're approaching this in the first instance because Often thinking that you're writing for a specific thing or for an audience can also be quite inhibiting. So I would say in the first instance, absolutely in the first instance, just write for yourself. Suspend judgment. You know, that's the hardest thing. We judge ourselves so much, right? Every word that we write, every paragraph, we go and we reread it and then we want to rewrite it and then we i really really advise this i've learned this for myself let it go just write it down just write it down because um someone really famous said this whose name i can't now remember um someone said kind of almost anyone can write a first draft but a real writer is made in the editing process so don't worry yet about the end shape of your piece of work of your writing because you'll get there there's different processes. 
but you can't get there if you don't actually get the words on the page and we have loads and loads and loads of ways to stop ourselves from getting those words down on the page right i do i mean you know clean windows clean carpets you know you know <laughs> so my house is always sparkling when i've got a deadline <laughs> and all of that procrastination it's just resistance and all resistance is about fear of judgment right so try to suspend that who is judging you right now you so try not to try and suspend judgment and resign yourself to it surrender you know i think this lockdown and this virus is teaching us all a lot about surrender um there's very little that we can be in control of right now and there's very little that we can change by sort of actively working against it you know uh, as we you know in our western mindsets we're very very used to that aren't we we're very used to kind of going in and being active and fixing stuff and right now we just can't um and obviously that's extraordinarily challenging and that's for, you know for some of us that's going to be very confrontational so the easiest way to deal with that is let go give in yeah resign yourself to it um Liz Gilbert says this. She's like, just resign yourself to, let's say, resign yourself to what your that what you're writing is gonna be kind of terrible. Don't care about it. Just write. Just write. Just write. Just write. Just write. Um, maybe that's easier said than done, right? So, um, should we talk a little bit about? some of the kind of practices and rituals that you can bring in maybe to make that um, process a little bit easier. Now, here's the thing about practices and rituals. They're really good and they can be really necessary. And I'm definitely one that bangs on about needing my space to be a particular way, needing this to be a particular way, needing this to be like that, needing da, 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 da. And all of that is true and yet, when I have gotten far enough into a book that I've actually gone over the resistance, it doesn't matter where I am. I finished my first book on a National Express coach on my phone. Um, I finished my second book in a cafe in the north of Norway in a snow blizzard. You know, when you're really there, it doesn't matter where you are. So once you're in it and, it, and the whole thing is driving you, then you can be writing anywhere. But to get to that place, you probably will need rituals and um, and a certain awareness of how you like to work. Um, it took me a lot of time to discover how I like to work, or, you know, what conditions are necessary for me to be able to really go in. It's different for everybody. I personally need a very ordered space around me. Um, I need uh, quiet. Uh, some people will have music. Some people will have nothing. Some people will ha I'll have Radio 4 on droning in the background for some reason. That disturbs me much less than anything else. Uh, but I would say give yourself that intention. And if giving yourself that intention, um, if it helps you to make that a ritual, that involves um, sitting in a particular place, maybe lighting a candle, maybe putting some things around you that um, you find particularly inspirational or comforting. Um, sometimes having a kind of mood board can be good. I'll show you a sort of one that I've got over here, for example, you know, just with pictures and words and phrases stuck on it that um, you like. And try to keep a regular hour if you can. Because again, it's that muscle memory thing. Because if you know that your body and your and everything is expecting you at that time today to be sitting down and doing that, it's it, it once you start to get into that habit, it, it's much um it's much easier to stay in the habit and much harder to break it because if you're not doing it one day, once it's become really a part of you, you'll feel uncomfortable, you know. 
and you won't um and you won't feel okay until you can do it so a routine a particular set time of day making a space and a ritualized space which really holds you you know it has to be a place you want to go i would suggest right now i've spent the last um two weeks making my kind of writing studio in our house shifting it all around and doing all sorts of things to it so that actually when i wake up in the morning this is the place i really want to come to and this is where i really want to hang out all day because it's become a haven so create a haven for yourself within um you know with your diary um so there's the physical aspect of that and then there's just actually the diary aspect of it itself can be a haven right um i came across a study from the Royal College of Psychiatrists that found that expressive writing can result in overall long-term improvements in both a person's emotional and physical well-being. Now, this is what we all really want at the moment, isn't it? I mean, it's what we always want, but we really need it right now. So I would say any kind of um, journaling, writing, diary writing that helps you express it. it doesn't have to be personal it doesn't actually have to be this is what happened today and this is how i feel it can be but if actually what is giving what is compelling you and what is giving you joy is writing a story about something completely other then that's okay too and that anyway is still going to give you that well-being because it's expression um and we do need to express ourselves and particularly in this time right now where um, ostensibly we're doing little, we're sitting at home. But actually so much is going on around us and it's changing so fast and it's at a global level and we're so, um, we're so out of control. We've got so many feelings washing through us all the time, right? So you don't have to sit and write about those feelings, but anything that gives you a sense of expression is going to help you feel peaceful and well um and i think everybody that i know who's on here is a creative person in one way or another so you will all know the feeling of what it's like when you hit that moment where you have entered the flow where you've written a few words that are amazing or done a piece of art or taken an amazing whatever it is or sung that note where suddenly all of you aligns and it's like you just go into being very uh, yourself in a really deeply comfortable way, right? Um, which is the gift, of course, of creating. And it's the gift of having that relationship between the human and the mysteries of inspiration. Okay, so Rachel is asking that the best writing happens in her head when she's walking on the heath i agree walking for me is a really 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 good exercise for inspiration also walking and swimming i think everybody probably has something that they can find that you know that takes you away from your desk actually um where you i walk and or swim for hours when i'm producing a book because that's the moment when actually all the ideas start to kind of um loosen and liberate themselves so yes and then rachel says but then yes when you try and capture them they evaporate i know exactly what you mean so i guess rach i would say that's a moment when if you're having those incredible thoughts just pick up your phone and just record them into your phone exactly then and there because it, it's hard when you come and sit down to it later and the morning pages my morning pages went on for months and months and they were still blah so it can take a lot of time to work through the kind of mess and to start to get somewhere that you like you have to be patient i think and i think you have to be um really kind to yourself and that sense of resignation of suspending judgment of not being mean, um, 
when you're writing those words and they're coming out and they're clunky and they're not as beautiful as they were in your head when you were walking, don't dismiss them. Just put them there. Because here's the other thing I wanted to say. How much is inspiration and how much is perspiration? Honestly, I would say writing is probably, well, any creative work to a large degree is a very, small, let's say 1% inspiration, 99% perspiration. Because you you got to show up and you've got to keep doing the work. It's the daily discipline. It's the daily exercising of that muscle is really what you need. So when you come back from the Heathwich and you go, I can't, um, and you're trying to write things down and they're not making sense to you, or they're not coming out as beautifully as they were in your head, don't worry about it. Write them as clunky as they are. Because actually tomorrow you might go back to that and then the next day. You know, it takes time, it takes polish. I see my process like this. I always think of the first draft as like a massive kind of, <laughs> you know, outpouring of everything. And it's awful and it's horrible and it's like this great, I, I see it as a great big mound of kind of, ugh. And then, and then the second draft is when you go and, you know, it's like you've got a massive stone and then you take your tools and you start to chip and then another draft and then another draft and by whatever draft my first book took seven drafts by the way this one um seven drafts so uh, slightly dispiriting but what happened is that with every draft i chipped away more <laughs> thanks <laughs> i chipped away more i chipped away more i chipped away more so that finally what I was doing was just giving it this lovely last polish. So don't expect, you know, don't expect your man to emerge from the stone on the very first go. You know, writing is work. We think inspiration means we've given something whole and it's done. And yes, sometimes we are. But exactly as Elizabeth Gilbert says about creativity being a relationship between a human being and the mysteries of inspiration, you the inspiration is coming through you we've all had this sense where sometimes we sat and we've written or taken a you know whatever our, our creativity is and you go where did that come from I, I had nothing to do with me we all know that right it's like you're channeling something but anyway the inspiration can come but it's coming through you that's why that relationship has to happen um the second book that I was going to recommend is, in fact, Elizabeth Gilbert's Big Magic. Now, I don't know if you're a fan of her work or not, and I think it matters not. I didn't particularly love Eat, Pray, Love, but I absolutely love, love, love this because she is a powerhouse, Liz. Um, and she is 100 percent committed to her creativity. And she has a very good approach. And I think Big Magic is a beautiful book. It's not one that you're going to want to read necessarily from cover to cover, but it's a great book for dipping in and out of. You might want to read it through and then dip in and out of the bits that you like. It's, um, it's similar in a way to the artist's way, because again, it's talking about a kind of inspirational process, which is a spiritual process. Um, but she has some lovely ideas which I really like. She has this idea that ideas exist sort of on the ether, on the matrix, and they come and they find you, and they come and they nudge you on the shoulder because an idea is um, almost an entity, you know, that's it's already out there, it's formed, but it wants to be expressed. So it comes and says, will you express me? Um, I've had these experiences too where I've ignored an idea for years, you know, you're going, I haven't got time, haven't got time, haven't got time. And then a couple of years later, you come to it and you think, I've got time for this now. Huh. And it's gone. And then, and then you'll see that someone else just wrote that. And two years later, someone else published that. And you go, oh, they got the idea. She really has this concept. I really, um, I really agree with it. I think that there is that. But if we're going to think of ideas and our creativity being like that, you cannot dismiss the, uh, the fact that this perfectly formed, beautiful idea is coming through you. So you have to be able to express it. So there is that relationship. And for you to be able to express that, 
you've got to um, you've got to have your tools. So you need to have the discipline where you practice your writing. And by practicing your writing every day, you'll get better. And what you couldn't express very well on your first draft, by the time you've reached draft, hopefully three, but maybe even seven, if you have to, you will have been able to polish that and shape it into the thing that you wanted to say in the first place. So I think being patient and being consistent are really, really important. Writing is a journey into the self. We're in a period right now, whether we like it or not, we're being very much um, told to go in and to be quiet. This is a tool that we're all gonna need, at least while this virus is going on, because as we were talking about earlier, uh, all of us who've been here in Italy, you know, and we're in week four of lockdown, we've got a pretty, clear idea that this isn't going to end tomorrow um, and things might still get worse before they start to improve so we really 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 need our emotional stability we really need to have some um, inner resources um, and I would really say that writing can be a really good part of that of keeping you in touch and clear because of um, this idea that if you can express yourself, then why does it do you good? Because you're not holding those things inside of you. And we all know that, you know, we, we all want to boost our immune system right now, right? And it doesn't matter how many superfoods we eat, if we're carrying a lot of stress and fear, we're anyway damaging our immunity. So I would say even from a well-being point of view, um, Expressive writing is really useful because you don't want all of those fears and those thoughts and those worries to stay inside you. You want them to come out so that you can stay clear um, and have this sense of resilience because we're going to need it, right? This is one thing I would really suggest. Um, how do we deal with this? That we've all got a bit of this at the moment, right? I would say every time you come to sit down in your space, which you've made somehow sacred through your own ritual, whatever that is, your mood board, the pretty thing you're going to look at, a beautiful flower, um, you know, your favorite mug, uh, a candle, whatever, you've made your space sacred and you've come there. So, first, I would say sit and try to detach from everything else. So I would say, if you want, we can do this together. Close your eyes, and we're just gonna breathe in and out three times. It's a long, deep breath through the nose, and try and take it into your belly. If you want, put your hands on your belly, and let's all inhale together for a count of three. Three, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. You might feel just after those three breaths that you feel a bit quieter and a little bit calmer. So I would recommend that into the belly, put your hands on the belly and if your belly is not moving, then try and use your breath to move the hands. Because if we take the breath out of here and down into the belly, we will automatically calm down because <laughs> this is fight or flight, okay? So I would say, come to your space, settle yourself with the breath, yeah? And then just, write whatever and don't worry about it but keep on writing my personal tip is I have noticed I write in 90 minute bursts and actually someone told me a study gave me a study once where they uh, someone had studied creativity and, and they said weirdly it comes in 90 minute bursts so for me to do a 90 minute burst of writing I often have to be at my computer for about two and a half hours 
Um, but so I invite you to get into this particular space that you create every day and get to know yourself, get to know your own rhythm, <laughs> get to know what it is that you need, what is your, you know, how many hours do you need to go blah, blah, before you um, produce the sort of, you know, that of creativity. And don't worry about it if you don't get it every day. This builds up. So maybe do a challenge to yourself. In fact, this is a good moment, isn't it? I'm hoping to start next week um, a memoir writing course, which we've had planned in Florence for a while now. And um, obviously it's gonna go online. I've got some wonderful people who are gonna be joining that course. So it's gonna be a six week memoir, specifically memoir writing course with me on Zoom, I guess. Um, we've got the start is gonna be next Wednesday, which I think is the 8th of April in the morning, two and a half hour session. We'll have like a 15 minute break in the middle and 15 minutes of, you know, having a cup of tea and a chat at the end. So two hours of, of proper work. Um, over the six weeks, we're gonna work on something, all of us, including me. Um, and we're gonna go on this journey together where I'll take you through a really structured course where we can expand and work on lots of things that we haven't talked about today, specifically to do with memoir as well, which is really, oof, it's a minefield, right? You know, do you tell the truth? What's reality? How about other people? What about research? How do you condense possibly hundreds of years into a book? Or how do you, you know, what does it all mean? Um, I'm really, I haven't, I haven't managed to put this up anywhere. So I would invite everybody who's interested in that to come through my social media perhaps or just email me my website is carmin k-a-m-i-n dot co dot uk and if you go in there there's a contact page so you can email me through that if you don't already have my email or a contact with me and uh, please come and join us i want to keep the group quite small so that we can be five people so that we can really um so that everybody can really get something out of it but i don't have to run just one group a week you know i can make different groups for different time zones or, or whatever it is it just depends on who's interested um but if you want to come and take this journey i'm really excited about it because um I also need some structure and some accountability <laughs> and definitely I can give you some accountability because I think that what we'll try and do is if people are agree and if they'd like to, we'll work on producing a piece of work, but also along the line, people will have um, exercises that we do through the week where people can show up the following week and share that with the group and have, you know, constructive criticism as well. So. Um, so yeah that'll be that'll be on on here on the world wide web <laughs> thanks carmen it's i think it's been really interesting and i'm certainly going to be joining you in doing those three really deep breaths before i sit down at my desk for long hours of writing hours articles of hours, but they're literally long form yeah <laughs> they, thank well, you very much thank you for everybody for, for coming along go sorry go ahead I, you're one of the desk band people so again you know without having time here but uh, uh, we'll go through this on the well we'll do some actual physical work on ourselves so that we can also sit happily at our desks and you know um and and keep it all flowing and not get kind of become hunched people so thank you all for coming thank you again carmen and i hope to see you you all very soon Thank you everyone. I couldn't see everybody on my phone, but I'm so grateful to see people I've seen and thank you all for being here. Thanks, Kika. Thanks, Lynn. Thanks, Veronica. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.